One of the biggest mysteries of human evolution is the sudden divergence of ancient human lineages, and when studying the ancient past, one time period comes up repeatedly. Near the birth of humanity 800,000 years ago the Earth's magnetic field broke down, leading to the eventual rise of Homo sapiens. As we will see, around 790,000 years ago, the Earth suffered several millennia of horrific conditions caused by a reversal of the Earth's magnetic poles and a meteor impact. Indeed, the last permanent magnetic field reversal occurred approximately 790,000 years ago, but it came dangerously close to reversing only 42,000 years ago. Another mystery of human evolution is the extinction of the Neanderthals. Prior to 39,000 years ago, Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans coexisted in Western Europe for 2,000 to 5,000 years, supporting the theory that competition contributed to Neanderthal extinction. Brief cold and dry climates in Europe have been considered as another possible stressor for Neanderthals. However, analyses of Campanian volcanic eruptions from archaeological sites in Greece, Eastern Europe and Libya revealed that the eruption occurred early in a dry period, post-dating the end of the Middle Paleolithic and the Mousterian tool manufacture, and so post-dating the extinction of the Neanderthals. Recent discoveries call into question the existence of Neanderthals after 39,000 years ago, and point to a tighter correlation of Neanderthal extinction with the last champ magnetic excursion, and the subsequent brief period of very low geomagnetic field intensity centered at 41,000 years ago. Scientists hypothesized that low magnetic field intensity in the last champ excursion interval played a role in Neanderthal extinction. Given that the two populations shared habitats for 2,600 to 5,400 years, but why modern humans were not similarly harmed has remained a mystery. In fact, the extinction of the Neanderthals 41,000 years ago can now be linked to the intensity minimum associated with the last champ magnetic excursion. Meanwhile the survival of anatomically modern humans can be attributed to differences in the aryl hydrocarbon receptor which plays an important role in the evolutionary response to UVR fluctuations. With a 95.4% certainty, the extinction of the Neanderthals occurred between 41,030 and 39,260, calibrated years ago. Other research put Neanderthal extinction at 41,227 calibrated years ago, with a standard deviation of 219 years and 39,528 to 41,013 calibrated years ago using another method. There is unequivocal proof of skin pigmentation differences between European early modern people and Neanderthals, but at least some Neanderthals appear to have had the same pale complexion and or red hair as certain modern humans. Human skin pigmentation reduces the detrimental effects of ultraviolet radiation but this benefit is outweighed by the requirement of sunshine for vitamin D3 synthesis. The discovery of changes in amino acid substitution in an intracellular chemosensor for modern humans, Neanderthals, and other humans may have been a factor in modern human survival at the time of Neanderthal extinction. Response to environmental changes, such as UVR flux at Earth's surface, would have involved that RR, a chemosensor that regulates immunity and differs in AMHs versus Neanderthals. Thus, Neanderthals were replaced by modern humans in Europe because of the effects of ultraviolet radiation, and the unique modification of RR in modern humans led to significant competitive advantage over their Neanderthal neighbors, due to decreased sensitivity to environmental toxins and UVR. Furthermore, the 42,000-year-old geomagnetic reversal set off a chain of dramatic events with far-reaching effects for our planet. The ozone layer was destroyed, tropical electrical storms raged, Solar winds produced amazing auroras, Arctic air rushed into North America, ice sheets and glacier erupted, and weather patterns transformed abruptly. The Earth is a gigantic magnet because its core is solid iron, and an ocean of molten metal swirls around it. This churning generates a massive magnetic field that wraps around the globe, shielding it from charged cosmic rays from space. The magnetic field can become unstable and its north and south poles can flip for reasons that scientists do not completely understand. The previous dramatic reversal, though brief, occurred roughly 42,000 years ago. Life on Earth was exposed to extreme ultraviolet radiation during these occurrences, and megafauna became extinct, while people sought refuge in caves. The North Pole traveled across North America, 
out towards New York, and then back over to the west, then raced down through the Pacific to Antarctica, where it stayed for nearly 400 years, before shooting back up through the Indian Ocean to the North Pole. Tropical Pacific rain belts and Southern Ocean westerly winds rapidly altered at the same period, bringing arid conditions to locations like Australia, at the same time that a variety of megafauna went extinct. Further north, the enormous Laurentide ice sheet swiftly expanded across eastern North America. With no magnetic field, our planet lost its barrier against cosmic radiation, allowing far more of these penetrating particles from space to enter the upper atmosphere. High-energy cosmic rays from the galaxy, as well as massive bursts of cosmic rays from solar flares, were able to penetrate the upper atmosphere, charging the particles in the air and generating chemical changes that cause stratospheric ozone loss. These climate occurrences match the environmental transitions seen in many natural climate and environmental change datasets. These conditions would have also extended the world's magnificent aurora displays. At times, nights would have been as bright as day. These same environmental consequences would have also occurred 790,000 years ago, except that they endured for 22,000 years, not just 400 years. Rather than Neanderthals, Denisovans or Homo sapiens, Homo erectus ruled the Earth at the time. In fact, when the poles moved 42,000 years ago, trees exhibited a lengthy surge in atmospheric radiocarbon levels caused by the collapse of Earth's magnetic field. As stated, the magnetic field of Earth is thought to be formed within the planet's iron core. It reaches far into space and serves to shield the atmosphere against solar wind, a stream of charged particles emitted by our Sun. Without the magnetic field, the particles would peel away the atmosphere, enabling dangerous radiation to pass through and eventually leaving Earth a lifeless, barren planet, similar to what happened billions of years ago on Mars. What's more, Scientists discovered that this complete reversal of the Earth's magnetic field took significantly longer than previously assumed. Researchers discovered that the reversal took roughly 22,000 years to complete, with the field beginning to collapse around 795,000 years ago. Surprisingly, Earth was bombarded by meteors at the same time, 790,000 years ago. An asteroid 1.2 miles across split the sky over modern-day Southeast Asia, one day in the late Pleistocene. The massive space rock crashed in at a shallow angle, ripping out a crater more than 10 miles wide and showering debris on the surrounding terrain. The scenario took place at a time when Homo erectus had already expanded from Africa to China and even to Southeast Asia's islands. Archaeological artifacts discovered with tektites in southern China indicate the presence of a Homo erectus population, in the area during and after the impact. Stone tools and a charcoal layer, most likely generated by flames from the impact, have been discovered in the debris field. It has even been proposed that the ensuing local deforestation, following the fires made it simpler for this group to get stones essential for toolmaking. The size of the scattered field and the dispersion of the tektites indicate that the Earth-striking body was at least a kilometer in size, and delivered an astonishing 1 million megatons of TNT energy within seconds of impact. The meteor collided with Earth with such intensity, that the resulting explosion covered nearly 10% of the planet in gleaming black chunks of stony debris. These glassy blobs of melted terrestrial rock, known as tektites, were found all over the world from Southeast Asia to Eastern Antarctica, and from the Indian Ocean to the Western Pacific. The collision is supposed to have generated a rim more than 300 feet tall and thrown glass blobs thousands of miles. Some even left the Earth's atmosphere and gained their flanged edge upon re-entry. The Australasian tektite strewn field is the greatest location where tektites are found. It is the largest of its kind, encompassing a tenth of the planet's surface. Some of these tektites have even been discovered as far away as the Antarctic coast. While the impact was not severe enough to cause a mass extinction, it was significant enough to leave a large crater. Indeed, the findings prompted the researchers to believe that many cosmic collisions occurred. In addition to the events in Australasia and Central America, a smaller collision in Tasmania about the same period formed the Darwin Crater the scientists predicted disastrous results locally. There were wildfires and tremors for hundreds of kilometers around the impact location, 
and an ocean impact would have resulted in tsunamis hundreds of meters high. Globally, dust and gases were blasted into the upper atmosphere, obstructing sunlight and decreasing surface temperatures. Nobody knows if the asteroid hit the ground and broke up, or if it burst just above ground level, but either way, the event was catastrophic. It would have killed off life near the impact region, and it must have been a dreadful place to live at the time. However, this occurrence, combined with the magnetic pole reversal, is thought to have given origin to the human group that resulted in Homo sapiens. It all depends on how you draw the tree, with some seeing Homo sapiens as a branch and others seeing Homo sapiens as the primary trunk, all the way back to the split right before 800,000 years ago. The magnetic field is dynamic, meaning it moves and changes strength throughout time. It can also reverse, with the magnetic north and south pole switching locations. This has occurred numerous times over the planet's history, but, due to the timescales involved, little is known about what happens when a reversal occurs. Lava flows, on the other hand, operate as a time capsule for the planet, providing information on the position of the Earth's magnetic field at the time it solidifies. The magnetic field began to disintegrate around 795,000 years ago, according to scientific measurements. It grew unstable and experienced two partial reversals over the span of 18,000 years, before undergoing a full reversal that took around 4,000 years to complete. The gap of 22,000 years between the onset of instability in the outer core dynamo was not unexpected. The complexity of the geologic record between approximately 795,000 and 773,000 years ago, on the other hand, is remarkable. The reversing process took longer and was more complicated than previously thought. The abrupt changes and unprecedented high UV levels would have led ancient humans to seek cover in caves, similar to the recent flip, and it must have felt like the end of the world. This happened 790,000 years ago, when ancient humans separated into two groups, the Denisovans and Neanderthals, and the rest of us. Indeed, scientific data indicates that Denisovan mitochondrial DNA diverged from modern human and Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA, around 779,300 years ago. This common ancestor is still unknown, but it may have been something similar to Homo antecessor which branched off from the contemporary human line some 850,000 years ago. The cause of the abrupt split in early humans is unknown, although a rapid mutation is one likely explanation for the emergence of several human clades. The mutation theory is the most cost-effective explanation for why humans diverged abruptly around 800,000 years ago. Although fossilized skulls reveal nothing about the brain beneath, a gene mutation may have altered important neural processes like speech and language. Experiments in the lab with minibrains have shown that tiny mutations caused the differences between Neanderthal and modern human brains. Furthermore, during a particularly long and cold ice age, the mitochondrial DNA of Neanderthals and modern humans became incompatible, resulting in the biological split of the two groups some 500,000 years ago. The identical genetic alterations are quite likely to have occurred 800,000 years ago, resulting in population bottlenecks. Despite inaccurate understanding of the time of both UVR fluctuations and evolutionary events, it has long been assumed that ultraviolet radiation reaching the Earth's surface affects biological evolution. Because of its function in sustaining stratospheric ozone, the previous strength of Earth's dipole field serves as a proxy for UVR flux. Fossil discoveries, improved radiometric dating, and improved dates for nodes in human phylogeny from human mitochondrial DNA, and Y chromosomes have all helped to constrain the chronology of human evolutionary processes. Meanwhile, the once heralded mitochondrial Eve hypothesis, a major foundation of the out of Africa theory, has been proved to be based on bad science and incomplete data. In fact, phylogeny based on mitochondrial DNA and why chromosomes in modern humans over the last 200,000 years yields changes in evolution, corresponding to geomagnetic intensity minima, supporting the hypothesis that UVR reaching Earth's surface influenced human evolution, with the location of extinction controlled by the geometry of stratospheric ozone depletion. In fact, estimates of the time of branching episodes in the human evolutionary tree, 
based on present and fossil DNA and Y chromosomes, can be connected to minima in field strength over the last 200,000 years, implying a long-term function for UVR in human evolution. New fossil discoveries, improved fossil dating, understanding of the past strength of the Earth's magnetic field, and refinements to the human evolutionary tree are all focusing attention on a possible link between UVR arriving at the Earth's surface, magnetic field strength, and events in human evolution. Despite early reservations among phylogeneticists with expertise beyond the human genus, the molecular out-of-Africa hypothesis has been widely accepted among population geneticists for more than 30 years. The paleontological basis for the idea is likewise unclear, a situation that has been more pronounced in recent decades as Eurasian paleontological knowledge has grown. It is especially interesting to analyze Eurasian advances in paleontology and archaeology, connected to Homo sapiens evolution over the last 20 years. The early stages of the evolution were explored in a study that linked the morphological skull mosaic of Homo sapiens, and Homo erectus to ongoing Homo sapiens admixing in Asia, including gene flow between Eastern and Western Asia. In terms of the morphological distinction between sapiens and erectus, geneticists identified them as subspecies, Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens erectus, based on their overlapping features. Furthermore, European Neanderthals would be designated as Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, while Eurasian Denisovans would be designated as Homo sapiens altiensis. The reversal of evolution in the Homo sapiens sapiens tree is consistent with the molecular identification of the sister group relationship between Homo sapiens and Homo antecessor, as well as an 850,000 year old Eurasian separation into Homo antecessor and Homo sapiens within a diversifying population of Homo erectus. In fact, a multidirectional, shuttle dispersal model, rather than a unidirectional, out of Africa, paradigm, is more likely to explain the complicated evolutionary links between African and Eurasian human species of populations, according to the study. Researchers believe that after the split between Homo sapiens and Homo antecessor 850,000 years ago, Homo sapiens split further into Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis 800,000 years ago. The findings are consistent with the paleontologically confirmed presence of Homo erectus in Eurasia, an 850,000-year-old Eurasian divergence between Homo sapiens and Homo antecessor, and an 800,000-year-old Homo sapiens divergence between Neanderthals and Denisovans. However, the existence of these investigations, and hence their phylogenetic implications, has been ignored by proponents of the out-of-Africa concept. The phylogeny includes an African exodus of Homo erectus more than 2 million years ago, as well as a continued evolution of Homo erectus in Eurasia that resulted in a population that split into Homo antecessor and Homo sapiens 850,000 years ago. According to the findings, Eurasia was the provider rather than the recipient in the evolution of Homo sapiens. The discovery that Homo sapiens sapiens left Africa as erectus, and returned as Homo sapiens sapiens represents a shift in thinking of human development to one that is consistent with the large Eurasian record of human paleontology and archaeology.